G'day Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. Well, it's been a while, but it's time to get stuck back into the FJ45. Let's have a look at where I left off. Now, in the last episode, you may recall that I shortened that tub about 200 mil. That tub is just sitting on there at the moment, and to my eye line, it's sitting a little bit too high. That body line doesn't quite line up with the tub. From the top of the tire to the bottom of the flare, that looks a little bit too large to me. And that headboard is sitting a little bit too proud of the roof line as well. So it's pretty clear to me it needs to be dropped by about 50 mil or so. That's easy enough to do. I've just got to section that little bit out around the chassis. But my problem was here at the back. These are the factory tail lights. As you can see from the back, those tail lights are sitting on the chassis. So I had to come up with a solution to be able to drop this tub down. Now I do like the look of the factory lights. Unfortunately, the easiest solution was to get a pair of these LED lights. They are only about 50 millimeters deep, which means when they're mounted up into these factory holes, they'll be able to clear the end of the chassis. That chassis can come down the 50 mil that I need. Once that tub's affixed, then I can get the twin stack exhaust on it and get this motor one step closer to firing. You want to see how I mount that tub up permanently? Stick around. Now what I'm doing here is I'm getting the center line of this wheel arch. 494 millimeters divided by two, which is what, 247? Now, we'll just find the center line of this tire, roughly. 676 six divided by 2, which is 338. And it looks like that tub needs to shift back about 15 mil. Cool. Well, I've rigged myself a little bit of a sling here, just off of the hoist, which allowed me to lift the tub up off of the chassis and do what I needed to do below. And I actually got the balance point right first go. Unbelievable. Okay, now here's the flush mount jobos. Doesn't look as good as the factory in my opinion, but at least it's flush and it'll allow me to drop this tub another 50 mil. Cool, let's do the other side. Now the mounts for these tail lights are here, which obviously sit out here in the middle of dead air. But I think what I'm probably gonna do to mount that there is get these M6 nut certs, drill a hole into the back of this light, mount the nut certs there, and then screw an M6 bolt from the back of each of those four corners and just use those original Toyota factory brackets. You know, the alternative is to put a big plate in here and drill two holes where these two mounts go. But I actually like this solution better. It's a little neater, a little bit less work. Nut certs for the win. Beautiful. Great solution. Cool. That's mounted completely flush and it's nice and centered in the back of this brake light hole here. So we'll call that one a win, I'd say. Let's do the other side. Okay, there's our tail light set into the back of the tub. As I said, I would have rather have kept the factory ones. This is a little bit boy racer for me. But listen, it's the simplest solution I could come up with to clear the back of the chassis. So I'll take that as it is. Okay, time to shift the tub back about 15 mil and drop it in place. Now, my back is close to square. You can tell by that bolt pattern where the tow ball is. And now that tub is resting on those chassis mounts. I don't know whether the camera shows it, but the tub is tilted to the back or up on the front. And you probably see it quite easily here between the cab and the tub. So what that means to the next step of the operation is I've got to clearance this for the chassis so that I can drop the tub down on the front. And this second one may have to get clearanced as well. I've only got about 10 mil between the chassis and the tub. So we'll see whether it pivots enough on that point to allow the tub to sit level or not. First things first, however, let's notch these out so that we can clearance the chassis on both sides. All right, that's all cut down now. I took off that little lip that was on both sides of this bracket. Let's drop our tub down and see whether we can get it nice and level or whether we're gonna have to take a little bit out of the back side of that bracket there. 
Now you can see that the tub has to go forward because that gap there is quite tight compared to that gap there, which is quite large. If I shift the tub forward, it's going to be raised again because that bracket is going to ramp up on the chassis. So unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to chop the same amount out of that back bracket that I did on this front one. All right, well, let's get out the angle grinder and throw some sparks. All right, I've trimmed the second bracket back a little bit, just like the first one. Let's lower this tub down and see what we got. Unbelievable, these little studs here foul in the back of the chassis. So it's a good thing that I didn't go and use these as my fixing points because that would have got me in a whole lot of hot water. All right, that's not too bad. The back of the tub's got to go up a little bit because that gap's not sitting quite right, which is fine. It's centered well on the middle of those bolts and she's probably sitting pretty good front to back. Now that I'm getting into the fine adjustments, I'll put these steps back on because they're going to help guide me on where this tire sits in this guard. You might recall from the last video, I put that little triangle in there. These things originally came down here like this. It just looked a little bit too odd with that triangle not filled in. So now I've got this same angle that runs off the back of this flare across this step. Now that'll help guide the centering of this tire in this wheel arch. All right, I think I've got it positioned about where it's going to sit. The gap between the tub and the cab is nice and equidistant. I've got a string line running through that body seam below there and along the back of the tub. And if we look at the angle of that string line, it's holding true all the way through to the front of the cab. This body line is now lined up with that part of the tub. This body line is lined up with the bottom of the step. The wheel is centered in the wheel arch. The tub at the back is centered left to right on that tow ball. All right, let me drop this house down, get it out of the road and see what an unobstructed view looks like. There we have it. Tires are nice and centered in the wheel arch. The tub has got a nice equidistant gap from the cab. The body lines are lined up with the tub. The headboard is almost equidistant from the roof and the tub is centered nicely left to right. There's our left side and there's our right side. Nice one, I'm happy with that. Next step, time to fabricate some mounts for the tub and get that thing mounted on there so that I can fab up and run some twin stacks. Beer o'clock at the moment, however, so I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. Bye. Now I'm just going to cut myself out a little bit of rubber here to sit on top of the chassis where the tub touches the chassis rail, just to try and knock any potential tinniness out of it. There, one chassis rail protector. Just got a little bit of box section here, which I'm going to weld a cap onto. I'll drill a hole through there, and that'll be the spacer for my rear tub mount. There we go, one spacer block done. Grind up the other one, drill some holes, get those fitted onto the car. There's roughly center for my box. Beautiful. All right, I'm fabbing up the second pair of mounts. This is the next one back from the rear. Now the idea behind this mount is I'll drill a hole through here and through there, bolt that in place. And then the same thing here. Now this forwardmost cab mount, it is actually lined up pretty good. The hole right here is right in the middle of this cross member. So the only thing I need to do is fabricate a spacer just like that. You got to have one win when you're doing these things, don't you? Now I'm going to take this rubber bumper off because I can reuse that sucker on my front mount. So here are the three mounts that I've come up with. That is the rearmost mount, and that's just a spacer block, basically. Bolt goes up through the chassis, through this spacer block, into the bottom of the tub. Mount number two is an offset, so that one bolts up into the chassis, and I'll need to drill a hole here and line it up with the hole that's in the bottom of the tub. Mount number three is a longitudinal mount. This bolt and rubber run through the chassis, and this part of the mount here is welded across the brace on the tub. And finally, the tub will also be sitting on this chassis here on top of these bits of rubber that I've got cut out. So all in all, six mounting points, plus the tub sitting on the chassis on the rubber. I think that is well and truly going to do it. Now, time to get this tub back into the air so that I can start fitting these mounts. 
Yeah, it's got our hole drilled out. The driver's side was good, but the passenger side had these two rivets here that had to be removed. That mounting block is going to sit like that. Bolt up through the bottom into the bottom of the tub. Just a wee bit of cheap paint here to stop any rust. Okay, I got my two blocks on the rearmost mounts. Now I'm going to let the tub down, bolt these mounts in place, and then move forward. Bit tricky to get your fingers in there to get the nut on, but not impossible. Now both of those two mounting blocks are bolted in place. It's nice and square on the chassis, left to right. And I measured this distance between the cab and the tub, and it's 92 millimeters on both sides. So that's unbelievable that it's spot on there because this cab's got slop in its mount, so that cab can actually move left to right and front to back a little bit as well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm gonna move right onto the front mounts on this tub. And the reason for that is, if I get the height correct on the front of the tub and the left and the right correct on the front of the tub, then there's only one position that those setter mounts can go. Now these mounts are just bolted through the bottom of the chassis. These bits are welded onto the tub. So I'll center that bolt in the hole and then I'll mark where I need to weld this blue bar in place and just weld it in. Easy peasy. Okay, front cab mount's done. Now that middle mount is done, so I've just got a bolt running through here, plate running out to this cross member, and then a bolt through here. And then we've got the original factory Toyota rubber mount here. On here, I've got that small bit of rubber sitting in between the chassis and the tub. And that's it, this tub is mounted. Okay, that tub is down and secured. Beautiful. Let's check out our lines. Nice and squared at the back of the car. These lines here are perfectly square. So the cab and the tub sitting on the chassis are parallel with one another, not skew if one way or the other. So that is perfect. The wheels are centered perfectly in the wheel arches. These body lines follow through like they're supposed to. The headboard is just marginally proud of the roof and it's got the perfect rake on it as well. And if you look at where the wheels are compared to the wheel arches on both sides, that's the driver's side, that's the passenger side, that tub is square left to right on the chassis. All right, I am absolutely stoked with the way that turned out. Well, that's been a long time coming, but I finally got that tub finished. Thank goodness for that. Next order of the day, fit up an exhaust system to this LSA so that I can get one step closer to firing that up. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, hit subscribe and follow along. If not, bugger off. Keep the shiny side up, everybody. Bye now. <laughs>